All right, welcome to part one in our four-part series about the pre-snap motion in Matt Canada's offense, specifically as it relates to 12 personnel, meaning one tailback, two tight ends, and two receivers. Um, let's take a quick look and then we'll break it down. So right off the bat, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six players on the move. Quarterback picks his knee up as if to hike, snap the ball, then nope. The second shift, we've got about five more people Quarterback runs up to the line, starts the jet action, and ends up handing off the ball. So we're starting with a tailback, or excuse me, the H-back out wide. We've got one uh, tight end in line, and we've got our tailback split out fairly wide. He's actually outside of the tackle box, which is going to give this these secondary players a little extra something to think about. But take a look at what happens with our two tackles on that first um, shift. So I'll play it, and you can see the right tackle and the left tackle both shift over to the right. The left tackle actually rep replaces the right tackle, while the right tackle comes out um, and lines up, creating a stack formation for the receiver to the bottom. The tight end and the H-back that were here have now shifted over to the left side of the formation, creating a strong side um, uh, look to the left. So as a matter of fact, our left tackle is gone. The tight end lines up as the left tackle. And now our H-back is kind of in that more tight end role. Um, in addition, James Conner has moved from his wide right alignment to a more standard um, left of quarterback. And then let's move into the second shift. So on the second shift, we notice that our tackles are now realigning into their original position. So the two guards in center never move, but these tackles on either end of them are moving. And what happens with our two tight ends is they flow from left to right. Now we're really got to strengthen run numbers to the right side, whereas before it was plus one to the left. Now we're plus two to the right. In the meantime, our slot receiver, through all that interference, has somehow managed to come up to the top of the screen undetected. Safety recognizes it late. Roll runs over. But now we've got uh, all 11 Clemson defenders inside the box, all trying to communicate, explain what's going on. Quarterback's now under center. That's another thing that maybe we hadn't even noticed. Quarterback's under center. James Conner is now aligned right behind center, again, creating additional uh, things for the defense to have to consider in um, their run uh, responsibilities. And as we see, it's just a standard handoff to the left, nice little eight yard run on second and two. All right, let's talk for a minute about why an offense would want to run so much pre-snap shifts. So one being that um, a single play early in the game can force the defense to declare three different looks, one for every formation. So in other words, Pitt's going to show three different looks throughout the shifts, and each time Clemson's going to respond. So we can guarantee that there's going to be a quality control coach uh, logging what those responses are from the defense. So again, this um, this play takes place uh, with 14 minutes left in the first quarter. So because it's very early in the game, this allows the uh, Pitt Panthers offense to start logging uh, a bigger sample size for what they might be able to expect from um, Clemson uh, regarding each formation. So in other words, um, normally it might take an offense five different plays at the beginning of the game to show different formations and get five different looks for, uh, from the defense. In this case, let's say that um, you know the Panthers run five plays, four of which are going to show them uh, multiple uh, looks because of the shifts. You know, you might be able to log. 10 to 15 uh, looks from the Clemson defense. Uh, secondly, um, the interference creates confusion among defenders. We'll see that um, the tackles are going to be shifting. Uh, this is something you might ask, well, the tackles aren't a threat outside. Why even do that? Well, again, it's just going to create more noise for the defenders to have to sort through. And then finally, it can draw the defenders away from the action. 
Um, the more you kind of get into the defender's heads, the more calls they have to make. Um, you know, they're, they're going to find themselves out of position and, you, and the offense can dictate um, where they want to try to fool them. So those are the main reasons. Let me know if you guys um, think there's any others.